to physics lab. In today's lab, we will find the acceleration of a ball as it goes down uh, an inclined angle. So how do we do that? We will measure the distance the ball travels. We will measure the time it takes to, take, uh, to travel that distance. And then we will plot a graph between the distance traveled and the square of the time. And then the slope of that graph will give us the value of the acceleration. The apparatus that we need for this uh, lab is a stand and that stand is to clamp one end of the angle higher than the other end. Then we have an aluminum angle and at the end of the angle we have a block of wood. So that block of wood is going to serve two purposes. First thing is it's going to stop our ball from flying off of the table and secondly it'll uh, let us know by making a noise when the ball hits it. So let's take a closer look at the angle iron. So the angle here has distances which are already measured. So the smallest distance that the ball will travel would be 0 0.6 meter or you can write it as 60 centimeter. And then the next marking on the angle is 70 centimeter or 0 0.70 meter. And then 0 0.80 meter or 80 centimeter. So it's up to you whether you want to record your uh, distances in meter or in centimeter. And then the next distance is uh, 90 centimeter or 0 0.1, uh, 0 0.90 meters, and then 1.00 meter or 100 centimeter, and lastly 110 centimeter or 1.10 meter. So these would be the distances that the ball travels, and we will measure the time that the ball takes to travel each of these distances. So starting with L is equal to 60 centimeter or 0 0.6 meter. So I have a stopwatch. I will release the ball and I will see how much time the ball takes to go hit that block of wood. So one, two, three. So I can see that the time on the stopwatch is 1.35 second. So 1.35 second. Now we don't just do this experiment once because there is a big uncertainty in the measurement of time. So we will repeat this value. So I would repeat this again at length is equal to 0 0.60 meters. One, two, three. So the next time I can see that the time is 1.36 seconds. So let's put these values down in our table. So you can see the table here. First thing I've done is in the first column L. Now this is the independent variable because I can choose what distance the ball needs to travel down the incline. So these are values which I already know. This is L, the independent variable. Uh, the time, I have no control over how much time the ball takes so that would be an independent uh, that would be the dependent variable and then since there is a bigger value of uncertainty therefore I have repeated that time to reduce random errors so what I will do next is uh, measure the time for L is equal to 0 0.70 meters again do that twice and then keep working my way up from 0.7 to 0.8 to 0.9 1.0 and then 1.1 1 .1. So I will now let the ball release the ball at the 70 centimeter mark and as the ball is released I will start the stopwatch. So here we go one two three and the time is 1.40 seconds. So let me write that down 1.40 seconds and then I repeat this for the same length so for 70 centimeter. I will repeat it one two three and this time uh, I found that the time is 1.43 seconds so now I would repeat this for a distance of 80 centimeters one two three and I found that the time again is 1.41 second.
repeating at 80 centimeter. One, two, three. So this time I find that the answer, the time is 1.58 seconds. Now I noticed that in the last reading here, the difference between two, 1.41 and 1.58, that's, that's a big difference. So I would actually do this once more and I would keep the two values which are closer to each other. So I will repeat this reading at length is equal to 80 centimeter. And why am I going to repeat that? Because the difference in the two read, uh, values that I got for time was quite big. So one, two, three. And now I have a time of 1.44. So what I will do here is I will go to my table and in my table, I will discard this value of 1.58 and I will replace it by 1.44. So all further calculations that I do will be based on this value 1.44. So continuing with my measurements, next I want to let the ball start at the 90 centimeter mark and then see how much time it takes to travel down the inside. So 90 centimeter, trial one. One, two, three. So the time I have here is 1.75. 90 centimeter, trial two. One, two, three. And the time is 1.66 seconds. Now, length is 1 meter. Length is 1.00 meter. So trial 1. 1, 2, 3. Time is 1. 73 seconds. Trial 2. Distance 1 meter. Trial 2. 1, 2, 3. So time is 1.69 second. So now the distance is 1.10 meter. Trial 1. 1, 2, 3. Time is 1.72 seconds. Distance 1.10 meters. Trial 2. 1, two, three. Okay, so I was a little late in starting the stopwatch. Let me repeat it. So distance 1.10, trial two, one, two, three. And the time is 1.86 second. Now that I have my raw readings, what I need to do now is calculate the average. So for the first set of readings, I have 1.35 plus 1.36, and then I divide the sum by 2, and the calculator says 1.355. But I have to consider that the actual values that I had for time were both three significant figures, 1.35 and 1.36. So I have to write 1.355 also to uh, three significant figures. So I would write this as 1.36. So let's calculate the next one as well.
and again the calculator shows 1.415 which is four significant figures but I will only write it to two significant figures so I write it as 1.42 so I have now filled my column for average time next thing I need to do is find the square again please remember these uh, 1.36 this is three significant figures and t squared depends on t so since t is to three significant figures therefore t squared should also be to three significant figures so my calculator says that 1.36 squared is equal to 1.8496 but i cannot write 1.8496 i will write it only to two significant figures so i would write it as three significant figures i would write it as 1.85 Next, I have 1.42 squared, and the calculator shows 2.0164, so I would write it as 2.02. .02. Remember, three significant figures. So now what you can do is complete this table and go to Google Sheets, draw a graph of L versus T squared. L would be on the y-axis, and T squared would be on the x-axis. Once you have your graph, then you can get the equation from the scatter plot, add a trend line, and then use that equation to uh, complete the, the other parts of this lab. So I hope that uh, you had a fun time doing this lab.